Serving as a Jedi Master during the final decades of the Galactic Republic, Yaddle was likely the only one of the same species as Yoda to serve in the Jedi Order around this time period. While her being of the same race as Yoda definitely made her stand out among the other knights and masters in the temple, it was her early on struggle and deep motherly-like connection to the younglings that made her forever remembered and beloved in the Jedi Order following her premature death. About 300 years before the start of the Clone Wars, a young Padawan Yaddle and her master were sent to a war-torn planet that was under the control of a brutal warlord. Hoping to liberate the innocent of the planet, the two Jedi attempted to overthrow the warlord, but ultimately were overwhelmed by his large and battle-hardened army. During the Jedi's last battle, Yaddle witnessed her master get decapitated right in front of her by the enemy, with her being captured soon after. The next couple of nights, Yaddle was bound and tortured for information, but her will and trust in the Force allowed her to remain silent. She eventually became a common slave to the Warlord, joining in with the other slaves of the world she and her master failed to free. Years later, and the Warlord of the planet decided to conquer another world. And because of this, he had Yaddle buried deep underground beneath multiple boulders, as he feared she would escape without him personally on the planet, but still wanted her alive as a future hostage. With the last boulder put in place overhead, Yaddle began her centuries of confinement. Over the years, the very people she initially came to free started to treat her as a beast, cruelly mocking her whenever they fed her. As more and more time had passed, Yaddle became a legend on the planet, with her being simply referred to as the One Below among the populace above ground. During the centuries-long confinement, Yaddle relied solely on the Force for both her physical and mental survival achieving unity with the Force over time. However, one night, large earthquakes ravaged the planet and caused unimaginable destruction on the surface. These destructive earthquakes cleared a small path of escape from Yaddle's underground imprisonment, allowing her to finally see the sunlight for the first time in centuries. Despite the very people on the planet being her jailers and treating her like a beast for many years, Yaddle forgave them and helped the people recover from the destruction caused by the earthquakes. Once the chaos settled, Yaddle decided that rather than return to the Jedi Temple, that she would remain on the planet and help the natives rebuild from both the pillaging from the Warlord earlier and the destruction caused from the earthquakes, and help them rebuild she did, with years of hard work passing, the planet eventually becoming prosperous. One day, however, the Warlord that had conquered the world centuries ago went on to send his eldest son to reclaim the planet. The son came eager to take everything from the planet like his father before, but this time there was someone to stop him, Yaddle. Initially, she warned the wannabe warlord to stop and leave with his life, but he of course refused her mercy, and so a fight commenced between the two. The fight went as expected, with Yaddle defeating her enemy as he was knocked down into his own blade, cutting open his neck and bleeding to death. Afterwards, Yaddle returned to the Jedi Order and explained to them what had happened. Understanding the great struggle she went through, and her ability to remain in the light despite all these trials the Force had bestowed upon her, the Jedi decided to make Yaddle into a master, and eventually seat her on the Council. As a member of the Council, Yaddle specialized in maintaining and increasing the Temple's library of knowledge, gathering new books and artifacts from across the galaxy to add to the many shelves and chambers of the Archives. While her expansion of the temple's libraries made her renowned among the other masters, it was her motherly-like treatment of the younglings that gained her love from the youngest of the temple. For one, many young Jedi initiates came to learn of her centuries-long imprisonment, and her endearment as both encouragement and evidence of the Force's ability to guide one through hardship. Additionally, Yaddle was one of the most compassionate masters at the temple, willing to always hear out younglings and mentor them through their own problems with her always happy to offer advice to troubled students. Even someone like Anakin Skywalker, who was known to be closed off even toward his own master, tended to ask her for advice on his personal problems. Yaddle was also known to sneak sweets into the pockets of younglings, and turn a blind eye on harmless pranks done by students. So she was very well liked among the youth at the Jedi Temple for all of these reasons, which is why her death was so heavily taken by all when it happened. Yaddle ended up dying three years before the Clone Wars on the planet Mawan. The core planet of Mawan was undergoing a crisis as multiple crime lords sought control of the planet. Obi-Wan and Anakin were sent alongside Yaddle to maintain the peace until the Senate could decide what to do with the planet. While there, it was discovered that one of the crime syndicates seeking control was led by Granta Omega, 
an enemy who had harassed both Anakin and Obi-Wan in previous occasions. During this mission, Anakin's overconfidence and eagerness to take out Omega led to him being captured by this very man who held him as a hostage. Omega then threatened to launch a massive biochemical weapon at a city and kill Anakin if Yaddle didn't come and turn herself over. While Yaddle came to Omega's hideout as he had demanded her to, she did not come to surrender. Rather, through the power of the Force, Yaddle was able to quickly free Anakin from his bindings and attack Omega before the man had a chance to kill his hostage, but she was not quick enough to kill Omega, who was a split second too fast in launching the biochemical weapon at the city. Knowing full well millions would die if the city was hit, Yaddle threw herself at the biochemical weapon as it was being launched and took it with her as high as possible over the city. Using the full might of the Force, Yaddle was able to absorb the entire contents of the biochemical bomb as it exploded, leaving the city safe from its destruction. Anakin was right below her as he witnessed her die, seeing her whole body evaporate as it took the bomb's full blast. Her death devastated Anakin, as he blamed it on himself, for had he not been captured and held hostage, Yano would have been able to stop Omega without needing to sacrifice herself. The precious seconds used to save him could have been used to stop Omega before he detonated the biochemical bomb. But because of him, Yaddo was dead, and Omega was able to escape during the chaos. Although both Obi-Wan and later Yoda told Anakin that he shouldn't blame himself over Yaddo's death, as it was ultimately her choice for sacrificing herself to save everyone, Anakin of course never could fully forgive himself. With Yaddo now gone, her seat on the council was later taken by Shock T. Yaddle was the last Jedi Council member to die before the start of the Clone Wars, and her sacrifice was forever remembered by both the people of Mawan and the Jedi Order. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.